somewhere off the coast of Oregon, summer 1904. is 20 bucks. Get out. 15. You call that help, I'd be a fool to take her. Your mister ain't coming back, not after what happened. Get out. But I got nowhere else to take her. That ain't my problem. It is now. Come back here, you varmint. Come back here. Madame, we should marry my pet. What? Where are mother and father? They're gone. When will they be back? They ain't coming back. They're gone for good. Don't you understand that? No. Well, then you're going to have to learn. I reckon you had a soft life somewhere, but the good life is over now. You're in Oregon. I don't like it here, and I'm going to find mother and father. Fine, if Timberwolves don't get you the bear as well. They'll be back. You'll see. Well, you know, then you're going to need a place to sleep. You can stay here. 
Remember her. You were sent here to help me. What, what was your name? Francoise. Fran what? Francoise. Well, I can't remember no foreign sissy name. Call you Opal. Why? No reason. What do I call you? Me? You can call me Mama. But that's the name I call my mother. Well, fine. I'll just borrow it for a while till she gets back. Good night, Opal. But my name is Francoise. An old cloth bag fell to the floor. Inside was brown paper and colored wax pencils. Suddenly, an idea. Remembering the diary her parents taught her to keep, she, she began, began to write. write. Yeah, 
Father, until I find a way to be with you again, I'm staying with someone called the Mama. The more I know her, the more I miss you. Eat your grub. But, uh, Madame Le Chef always made me crap. Uh huh. Well, this crap is mush. <laughs> That's the life you live. You've got to conquer the land. The Mama does not have a cook or a governess or a servant, except for me. She needs lots of help and has lots of things for me to do. This is how you're to slop the hogs. Sue! <laughs> Look at Peter Paul Rubens. He's rolling in the mud. Now don't go making pets of the pigs. Come on them, they're gonna get sold. You can't sell him. It would hurt his field. Just exactly where are you from? I don't know. When I was there, everybody knew where they was, so nobody asked me. Ain't a single thing that's yours have the sun in common. You're that's the life you live it. You're to conquer the land. Fetch me that pail. Not the rug beater, the pail. The pail! Yesterday, it was called a bucket. <laughs> Scrub. Don't tell me you never scrubbed before. All right. Pail. Pail. Brush. Brush. Bon ami. Ah oui, je le connais. Bon ami. No more of that queer talk. It's bon ami. <coughs> bon ami. <coughs> Scrub. I don't like you. Well, that just hurts my feels. Make Earth glad. Every day I do wonder about those words. You said if I make Earth glad, you will be with me forever. Take these eggs around with the folks that buys them. Folks like the Gossip Sisters. Well, she's not from around these parts, that's for sure. Half of what she says you can't understand, and the other half comes out like she's talking backwards. You look like two ladies in a painting by Peter Paul Rubens. Who is Peter Paul Rubens? Him. Oh. Wait, wait, wait. Some folks who are sad, they have needs, like the saw girl with the faraway look in her eyes. Who needs a husband and a baby? Uh, preferably in that order. Or the man that wears green neckties. Who needs a wife? <sighs> Poor shy man. Simple as a child, always off by himself. Can't say two words in public, but they come out wrong. They met in the general store the first week of logging season. Good morning, ladies. Mr. Walters, have the new catalogs come in yet? Yes, ma'am. Wasted her youth on a college education. She'll never get married now. She's overqualified. Save one for you special. That's very thoughtful of you. Thank you. What kind what of foolish, foolish man would ever look twice at an old maid like, like that? that? Have the new catalogs come in yet? Sorry, Mr. Gibbons. I just gave out the last of them. Oh. Uh, well... Here, take mine. Oh, no, ma'am, I couldn't. Oh, please. My father probably already has one. Well, that's right kind of you. Thank you, Mrs. Miss. Uh, Miss? Miss Ryden. Say, Miss Ryden, I see you serving in the cookhouse. <laughs> Don't normally see such a proper lady like yourself slinging hash. <laughs> oh, I like to help out in the kitchen. It makes me feel useful. I figure your pa must be one of us shanty boys. Yes, he is. Miss... Her pa owns the whole damn lumber mill. Oh, boy. Forgive me, ma'am. I wouldn't have been so familiar if I'd known you as who you are. Oh, but you were, Come in here who you were. Um, but I'm not. I'm and just... And if I find another catalog in the outhouse, it's yours. <laughs> Dumb! Uh, maybe 
that kind of man. And soon after that day, Miss Rodden started finding bunches of wildflowers left on the path outside of her father's house. And there's also the girl that has no seen, who needs eyes. I used to see when I was your age. Then I lost my sight. Your eyes aren't lost. They're just broken. <laughs> yes, they are. Sometimes I wonder what the world looks like now. Get away from my daughter, you little foreign girl. And there's Shady McKibben, who lives at the far end of the forest. And does other people's washing, if you can imagine. You stay away from that old fool. She's odd, reads tea leaves. Or foreheads or, or something. something. But she's no seer. She's just senile. <laughs> children, ma'am? I wanted children very much, but it was never in the stars. Then why don't I come live with you until my parents come back? You aren't sparky like the mom I live with for now. Is she harsh with you? Yes. Perhaps that's because she needs your help so much. What's your name, child? I don't have one anymore. I used to be Francois. Now the mama calls me Opal. Opal? It is a gem, you know, very rare and precious. Let me come live with you. Perhaps I shall, if it's in the stars. I surely could use your help. Help? Dear angel mother and father, now I know how to make Earth glad. I must bring these folks joy by helping them get the things they need. Then you will come back to me as soon as I make Earth glad. Quite nice. Especially a lumberjack. But he didn't talk coarse like the others. His voice was gentle and he wore the nicest shaving lotion. That man was at least twice your age. It was Mr. Gibbons. Well, Mr. Gibbons is too old to have a respectable interest in a girl like you. A girl like me? You always treat me like a child just because I'm blind. I treat you like a child because you are a child. You're 17 going on seven. Stubborn. Headstrong, what's gonna come of you in a place like this? I won't go back to that institution. That's enough. You can't make me, I'd rather die. That's enough. Why can't it be that he liked me? I don't wanna hear another word about this young lady. It can only lead to trouble. He liked me. Wait, necktie. Oh, howdy. I heard about you. You're the new girl. Somebody leaves flirts just like those near the big house of the stock girl with the faraway look in her eyes. You mean the mill owner's daughter? Yes, and I know who. You do? The tree spirits. Oh, okay. They bring wishes. They always do when father was with me. I hear your folks is gone. Yes. Hey. I got me this mail order wish book. If you was a tree spirit, what would you choose? A bottle of Dr. Harvey's worm elixir? No. No? All right, hold on. 
How about a luxury galvanized indoor bathtub? No. Well, what then? More colored pencils to write with. All right. If I see any tree spirits, I'll tell them. Men that wear neckties on multiplication table of comfort. Now let's pick out a wife. A wife? The gossip sister said you need a wife, so I'm going to help you get one. Off with you. Mr. Gibbons? Miss Ryden. Look, she found a bunch of flirts, too. I find these nearly every day. Must be the school children who leave them. Must be. It wasn't the school children. We'll it see wasn't. you later. It was the tree spirits. It was. And guess what? 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 I've been asking them to bring you a baby. A baby? A baby? <laughs> the gossip sister said no one made like you ought to have a baby by now. So I'm going to help you get one. Uh, Off with you. <laughs> it's all right. I know what people say. Oh, I see you found a bunch of flowers, too. Yeah, I found them. I like wild flowers because they're just what they are. Not too fancy. You're not too fancy yourself. <laughs> so they say. <laughs> no, I mean, you are too fancy. Uh, so they say. Oh, I wish I could find the words. So do I. What I'm trying to say is, I know you're used to the finer things in life, like plumbing, but <laughs> the way you serve flapjacks, you just get this look of kindness about you, and I suppose it's too much to hope that... Go on, walk away. I'm a waste of time. Can't take me to a dime store, cause I haven't got a dime. Dreams are all I got that's not in short supply. But if I printed money, then I know just what I'd buy. That Sears and Roebuck wedding band on page 103. Gold electroplated with a lifetime guarantee. That Sears and Roebuck wedding band to flash before your eyes. One in just your size What I can't afford That's what you should have Like an Acme Wonder Washer Or Bonjour Parisian Salve Patent leather shoes Or a patent pending sieve And there's something with engraving I'd give anything to give That Sears and Roebuck wedding band On page 103 Gold electroplated With a lifetime guarantee That Sears and Roebuck wedding band Delivered COD Just for you From me As long as I know Nothing's gonna come true Guess I might as well go For the top of the line For a deluxe edition like you And that Sears and Roebuck wedding band On page 103 Gold electroplated With a lifetime guarantee A fella needs a dream to dream, especially if he's poor. That's the thing that catalogs and pretty girls are for. for the man who wears gray neckties. And a baby for the thought girl. And teaching the blind girl to see. And... and... Peter Paul Rubens, 
I'm going to turn you into a gentleman pig, just like Pygmalion. First, you need a proper education. <laughs> Try not to grunt around the mud. The teacher has a very tall temper. There's a little old bull. She's so immature. Dresses like a whole bull. I think I smell manure. Well, don't look at me. <laughs> Yo, children, children. Oh, bull. I see you are tardy again. Why? Because there is trouble in the chicken coop. Henry VIII pet quilt pies the seventh. On the head. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down. She gets into merits. That's what I call dumb. She talks really funny. I wonder where she's from. Some think she's a princess. What a little runt. Opal is so stupid. I think I heard a grunt. I did not. Uh, yeah, uh, no, uh, uh, <laughs> now, what do you call the animals in this picture? I don't know. Me, 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 I don't know. I do! <laughs> Lola, tell us please the names of the animals in this picture. I don't like Lola. That's a horse and a donkey, and a goat and a cow, and a frog and a sheep and a rat. Thank you. Thank you very much. The teacher is beaming delights all over Lola. <laughs> Opal? I have anticipations that the teacher will be get lights all over me, too. What do you call the animals in this picture? See if she can answer. What a little wart. I like eating rubber. I know I heard a snore. Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> well, what are they? Un boisson, un canard, un poulet. <laughs> Um, Cachon. <laughs> They're called no such thing. Yes, they are. Don't be insolent with me, young lady. Maybe she's talking in tongues. Oh, <laughs> oh maybe she's just stupid. stupid. Stop laughing. <laughs> There's no such thing as a cochon. Yes, there is. That's what Father called a pig. A pig? Well, that ain't how you call a pig. You call a pig like this. So no, don't say that. So because I talk in a different way. The same could be said of Sadie. Peter Paul Ribbons needs a foot bath for his christening tonight. But the mama won't let me use the wash tub since I dyed the chicken's bloom. Oh, dear. I don't like it here, Sadie McKibben. I miss the faraway lands. I want to go home. Aye. Oh, Sadie McKibben. Felix Mendelssohn is squeaking his cheese squeak. And I've none. I'm poor as a church mass myself. Felix Mendelssohn longs for cheese just like I long for angel mother and father. Aye. The mama says they're never coming back, but she is wrong. For they said, if I make earth glad, they will be with me forever. And so they shall. Only not in the way ye intend. But I'm trying real hard to make folks glad and get them the things they need. Not glad without, glad within. I don't understand. You must find home within, child. They're not coming yes, back. Yes, they are. I know they are. Perhaps they will return, but in a special way. How? Ye ask for a way ye may hear from beyond, a way for the lost to be found. 
Well, I know a way, a way without words. Its language is here all around. They will send you a sign, they'll send you a sign, a message of hope. to sell. Mrs. Potter, please. You were sent here to help me, and all you've been is a nuisance. Do you know what a nuisance is? I don't even know what an old sense is. <gasps> don't you sass me, girl. Mrs. Potter, you mustn't speak that way to the child. I'll not let you. You stay out of this. She's mine, not yours. If you're angry, be so at me. Well, that can certainly be arranged, seeing as how Opal's always over here lollygagging around while I'm back home doing both our chores. I'm to blame for her not doing her chores. I get lonely, and she does bring a smile. And for walking my best pig around so he gets skinny, you to blame for that, too? Perhaps I filled her head with silly notions. What about the teapot lid she glued on so it wouldn't fall off? Or the wash tub she floated down the creek because it needed a vacation? <laughs> or the 50 tomato plants she dug up so their toes could get some air? Come to think of it, Mrs. McKibben, you got a lot to answer for. It's only, it's that, only that I got livestock to raise and crops to tend and no husband and no money. And just when I thought I couldn't get any happier, I get helpful Hannah here to feed and clothe. I thought my name was Opal. You shut up. Mrs. Potter, you mustn't speak. You want her? What? I said you want her. Go on, take her. Please, take me. You know I can barely feed myself. Then you shut up, too. I don't need talk. I don't need advice. What I need is somebody to be there to help me. Just once. Somebody, anybody to be there to take the load off of me. That's what I need. Come on, Opal. No. Opal, you put that pig back in the pig pen and you stay away from him from now on. Come autumn, he is going to get sold. <laughs> And when we get back home, remind me to spank you. Go mind your elders, child. They may not be wiser than you, but they've been foolish a lot longer. Dear angel mother and father, there is terrible bumps on the mama's temper. Again, please come back to me real soon. Wait, wait. Peter Pa, 
Grandma Rubens, don't let the mama make you sad. Tonight will be a christening, and Felix Mendelssohn will be your godfather. And she sang him a poem by William Blake. Just fellow who may be gave thee life and bid thee feed by cross stream and joy the mead. Take the clothing of delight, soft is clothing, holy bright. Take the such a Christian me, Peter Paul Ribbons, Gentleman Pig. Well, in the mud, you're trying to get roots, so you grow into a beautiful flower. Little lamb, God bless thee. Little lamb, God bless thee. Make earth glad. Make earth glad. You what the wind is saying, which says soon, we shall be home. Miss Riding, she'd love to. 
I'll just sit with you. That's all right, Mr. Gibbons. Oh, you remember me. I can take care of myself. You don't have to stay. But I'd like to. I'll just wait till your pa gets back. I'm certain you'd much rather be dancing with the others. No, not me. Don't think Miss Ryden would want to dance with me again anyway. Not that I blame her. I got these two feet that don't get along with each other. Make a spectacle when I try to dance. Me too. Oh, I'm sorry. Are they Selena. watching? Who? The others, are they all looking at me? No, Selena, nobody's looking. I'm only glad my father wasn't here to see. He'd never let me forget about it. Sit in the corner, that's your place, he said. It makes folks uneasy when you try to socialize, he said. Now that ain't true, not a bit. Well, that's nice of you to say. I mean it. You're fine company. Thank you. You're pretty, you're bright, you're easy to talk to or my mouth wouldn't be moving. Thank you, Mr. Gibbons. You're easy to talk to, too. You have a real, real nice voice. You know what? What? See a couple of young fellers, just your age, like to get to know a pretty young girl. Sometimes it takes patience. Oh, but Mr. Gibbons... I'll go get a... your father for you. But Mr. Gibbons... You had a big fall down. <sighs> yes, I did. I have things you cannot see because your glasses are painted black. I'm blind, Opal. That means I can't see. Then why must you wear glasses? My glasses aren't for my eyes. They're for everyone else's eyes. Potatoes have eyes, so they can see all that goes on under the earth. If they can see in the darkness underground, you can see too. Opal, I'm, uh, I'm gonna go on home early. Something I need to do. You, you do what you want to for a while. That's something I've never heard it say before. Do you want to go on an exploration trip? What for? To search for eyes. Selena! Selena! Where are you? Opal, 
where are you taking me? To my boy's cathedral. Selena! my father. He's worried. He says I'm not to wander off alone. But we're not alone. Michelangelo is here. Michelangelo? Is someone else here? Michelangelo is a fir tree. He's so is very old and wise. Listen, he is speaking to us. He wants to give you one of his arms. His arms? Take my arm, he says. Trust me and I shall guide you. Oh, but what are you doing? Please stop. Take me back right now. I... Oh, it's only a branch. A walking stick. A feeling stick. So you can have seas by fields. Father would never let me go wandering on my own. The mama never does either. But tonight must be a special night. Selena! Come back here right now! Maybe we should go back. No. Here, show me how to use this. Like this. Side to side, inch by inch. Like a caterpillar making yeses along the path. Soon you shall come to the forest alone, whenever you wish. To drink at inspirations. <laughs> yes. Yes, I can do this. Gloria Domine, Gloria Domine, Grazia Deo. What are you doing? Lighting a candle of hope, as Father did it when he took me to the cathedral in the faraway lands. Let me hold the candle. Please? A long time ago, I heard voices. I lit candles in the dark, but that was before the fever came. What can you see when you cannot see? You see nothings. It's always midnight. It's always very, very black. Oh. Opal, there's something I need to know. What color are Mr. Gibbon's eyes? Night color. Night color. I thought so. Opal, before I grew, I saw a child like you inside a looking glass, and she was me first. Opal, my other half. Secret games we only know at first. She saw your world, a world of hope and surprise, full of dragons and castles and fairy queens and vassals. Colored eyes. Oh, what friends we were till I lost sight of her. When last I saw myself, she's who I used to be. Oh, 
Well, Work. would you help us, please? Work. Yeah, yeah. So, Work. what are you doing? Get away, girl! Where are you taking him, little Ruby? Back to the house! Help me put him in Where the back! Where are you taking Work. him? Get away! What is he coming back? I don't know where you come from, but you are here with me now, and you cannot wish that away. Like it or not, and here we work or we starve. I didn't choose this life. It chose me. Not that we always get to do what we want to. Sometimes we do what we can. Oh, Peter Paul Rubens, your soul has gone away too. And I rise and I work in the icy winter dawn. And I chop and I clear. Tree spirits brought you colored <coughs> pencils for Christmas. Oh. Opal, you gotta stop singing that sad song. But the soul of Peter Paul Rubens is lost. Where's that happy little girl I used to know, huh? She's the one that's lost. Sadie McKibben told me you would send me a sign to show me you are near though you are far. I know not what that means. I only know that I must find the soul of Peter Paul Rubens, or I shall never, never make her glad. Opal, there's chores to be done. Again, the thought girl began to find bunches of wildflowers along the path outside her home. I have a someone dreaming of me, leaving me daisies each day. Undeterred, telling me he cares without saying a word. My secret someone imagines no one can see. All he's unable to say. Father, he needs to tell me. I am not too young. I've known since the first day I met him. 
I, and I don't need your advice. And ever since then, he's left flowers along the path every day. No, he hasn't exactly said so in so many words. He's trying to find the courage, but I can hear, hear it in his voice. I don't need, I don't need to, to hear what I already this? Nothing. There's a picture inside. It's nothing. Who is she? Opal. My little girl. Where is she? She's dead. When will she be back? She ain't coming back. She's gone for good. Like angel mother and father? Yes. And Peter Paul Rubens? Yeah. Maybe they know one another. Girl, when are you ever going to learn the way things is? When are you going to learn that people don't... What's the matter? You look like you were going to have cry feels. I didn't know you could. Don't be sad. She's not gone for good. You just have needs of a sign. Would you hush? You are always babbling. And what's worse is I'm starting to listen. <laughs> Sometimes I think you may even... What is that? Nothing. Well, I done seen it already. What is it? Where'd you get all them papers? I found it. Well, them's my brown paper bags and my butcher paper. You took them. It's my diary. I write in it. Who are you writing to? Mother and father. You're writing to that old scrub woman, ain't you? What you saying to that old scrub woman? Give me that. No. What are you telling her about me? Give me that. No. My business ain't none of hers. Now give me no. that. No. Where did you get them crayons? From the tree spirits. You little liar. You stole them. You stole them right out of her school things. I found them. I took you in. I feed you. I clothe you. And I save you from an orphanage. And this is the thanks I get. Give me that, Opal. And get back in here and do your chores. No. Come back here, Opal. Give me that. No, no. Opal, come back. I won't. I won't. Opal. Opal, I need your help. And your pa keep thinking what might have been. Keep thinking what might have been. There'd have been lilacs all the year long. There'd have been all sorts of kids. Suppers and sweet things. i 
smile. Look at them bows. Look at you dressed up in new store bought clothes. If I'd a Opal ran to the Forest Cathedral to talk things over with Michelangelo, the fir tree. Oh, Michelangelo, the mama tried to take away my diary. What's that you said? Yes, that's true. I knew you'd know the right thing to say. Let me climb up into your arms. So she climbed up into his branches where the world looked like a dollhouse. And big problems look much smaller. It's such a comfort to snuggle up here in your strong arms. When I hug you, I can hear your sap going up. Just then, she overheard the man that wears gray neckties, leading the girl that has no seeing home through the forest. Shouldn't go wandering through the woods like that, Selena. It's a dangerous place for a youngster like you. Really? We're cutting trees. Widowmakers in the treetops and brush on the ground. Forest is a tinderbox this time of year. Who knows what could happen? I appreciate your concern, Mr. Gibbons. It means a lot. You're just lucky I found you. Can't imagine why your father just lets you wander off alone like this. He doesn't. But I told him I've got a mind of my own, and I'm going to go wherever and whenever I please. Ain't you afraid? Not really. The forest looks the same to me as our parlor. What you can't see can't scare you. You got spunk. That's for sure. Is that good? I'll say. Maybe if I had some of your spunk, I wouldn't always be so tongue-tied. I don't think you're tongue-tied. No, not around you. You're easy to talk to. But generally, when I got something important to say, my mouth just runs out of words. Oh, I don't know, Mr. Gibbons. Sometimes a person doesn't need words. Sometimes a person just knows. Let's get you back home. I suspect you want to pay a visit on Elsie Fairchild. What for? Ain't you heard? No, what? That baby finally come to Elsie and her husband last night. Come on. <laughs> a baby? To Elsie Fairchild? Oh, no. I have so much work to do. Maybe the tree spirits had a mix-up. This was a big calamity. Now there was only one thing to do. Come back here with our baby! I don't even give it! Shady McKibben! Oh, oh, what's wrong? I'll tell you what's wrong. That little foreign girl stole our child. What? She stole our pride and joy. Oh. She stole the fruit of my loins. Oh. 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 Give back the babe. I won't. This isn't your baby. What? 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 Your wife had someone else's baby. Oh, that's oh, a terrible thing to say. Oh, my God. Now, Opal, give, give that, that baby, baby back. back. I won't. This baby was an accident. What? This baby was meant for the Thought Girl. The, the thought, thought Girl? That's Laura Ryden. Laura Ryden wants to have your baby. I don't know. Oh, oh, no, 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 Miss Ryden can't have a babe until she has a husband. Why? Oh, well, if you have to ask. You're too young to know. No, no, Dreadful no, child. No, stop, I'll not hear another word against the child. Oh, well, it's time you start to learn the order of things. Babies are always brought where they belong. Then this is not the thought girl's baby? 
No. Very well. You can keep it. But I get the next one. <laughs> Stupid girl. Oh. But I must Just... get a baby for the thought girl. Maybe the man that wears great neckties should ask the tree spirits to bring her one. The, the man, man that wears, wears gray neckties. neckties? Andrew Givens. <gasps> well, we know all about that. It's L-O-V-E. <laughs> but he can't tell her. She won't ask him. And, and we, we can, can hardly, hardly sleep at night. <laughs> There's so much to talk about. I know. I must go now. There are hurries in my feet. I understand. But mind your ways. Did you hear that, Felix Mendelssohn? It's L-O-V-E. I only hope that the thought girl can spell. Did it come today? Nope. Yeah, it <laughs> come. Direct from Sears and Roebuck. Let's see it, Andrew. Oh. Lips, don't fail me now. Miss Ryden, it's no use. I can't ask her. Sure you can, Andrew. You just got to practice. But what do I say? I spent my whole life in the forest. I can't talk fast or fancy. My jaw don't cooperate. Just talk about what you know. Say what's in your heart. I heard me a cricket as he stirred in the thicket, making music all alone. That's good. Real pretty. Go on. Go on. I heard me the whistle of a bird in the thistle for a bird to call his own. You're getting it. And when that bird Gave out his cry and made a claim for a mate. He did the same as the kitty did, so I claim, why can't I? Everybody's looking for love. I say they're looking, looking high and looking low. Everybody's looking for love. I say they're looking, looking everywhere they go. Everybody's looking for love. I say they're looking, but it's only fair they know. No use looking right on your own. No one ever found it alone If everybody only knew they go looking two by two Whenever they go looking for love <laughs> Come on! Oh, but wait! You're on a roll, Andrew. Don't stop now! Yes, yes go on! Anyway, Miss Ryden, what I'm trying to say is I spied me a raven and his bride in their haven made of twigs above the knoll. I spied me a frog up on the side of a bog about to dive into his hole. And though that hole was mud and long, that frog was cleverly croaking me and ever so sucking. There just ain't no more like home. Everybody's looking for love, I say they're looking, looking high and looking low. Everybody's looking for love, I say they're looking, looking everywhere. Everybody's looking for love, I see they're looking, but it's only fair they know. No use looking round on your own, cause no one ever found it alone. If everybody only knew they go looking two by two, whenever they go looking for love. Oh, this way. <laughs> no, it's not the tree spirits. Oh, go. Go on, Andrew. Practice, Practice makes perfect. But to get right to the point, Miss Ryden, you're a man, and I'm a woman. And oh, what I mean is, I heard me the swishes of the turtles and fishes that were dancing in the brook. Where the water was rising, what I saw was surprising when I went to take a look. I saw a face come into view. And that face showed full of troubles Yep, it sure was a case It was alone with the bubbles I said, sir, better face it Life is only for doubles We'll find a mermaid to chase Just what I'd do if I were you Let's get you ready Here. Everybody.
everybody's looking for love. I see they're looking, looking high and looking low. Everybody's looking for love. I see they're looking, looking everywhere they go. Everybody's looking for love. I see they're looking, but it's only fair they know. No use looking around on your own. There's no one ever found it alone. If everybody only knew they go looking two by two and never they go looking for love. If everybody only knew The man that wears green neckties has got his... He gave the dog girl a ring of gold, and now she's his wife. The thought girl? Lord Ryden. Lord Ryden? Yes. There are trouble lines on your face. What's wrong? Nothing. You look like you is going to have cry feelings. <laughs> Nonsense. Why would I cry? I have not imagined. And I have too many imagines. That's the problem. When you can't see, all you can do is imagine. I don't understand. Go on, Opal, please. Please, I just want to be alone. Did I say something bad? It has nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do with anyone. Please go. The house you live in is the other way. I know. Just go. I don't feel like playing anymore.
Why didn't you come when I called you, Uncle? That's not my name. My name is Francis Wallace. dress and your apron. While I was packing, I found this. My diary. Uh-huh. I write in it. Uh-huh. It's a necessary thing. Uh-huh. You've been writing something about me in here. Read it. There is no song in the mama's heart. Somebody took it away. I'm saving my pennies to buy her a singing lesson. Well, why not? Maybe it'll keep you out of trouble. I'll wait for you by the side of the road. Is Felix Mills an unnecessary thing? You decide, child, where it'd be best to go. And where's the best I go? With the mama or with you? You decide what will make Earth the most glad. I'll wait for you in the clearing. Felix Nielsen, it's best I take you to the forest to be with the other forest mice, because they need you. But don't be sad, Felix Nielsen. I shall always be with you inside. Opal returned to the forest cathedral one last time. The forest was black and desolate. The ground was charred. The trees were scorched and skeleton. She could hear their death song echoing through the canyon. She saw that Michelangelo, whose arms were once so strong, was, was now black, black, brittle, and bone-like. The, the empty, empty color of, of shadows. But as she knelt down to release Felix Mendelssohn, she discovered something wonderful. There, among, among the blackened debris, was a small snow-white lily who had survived the fire and, and bloomed that day. day. Peter Paul Rubens, I have found your soul. Sadie McKibben, it's your sign. Well, 
Let's go. Francine. Oh, my God. 